keep in mind. At the, the other place where claim construction comes up is going to be at these patent office proceedings. And a critical aspect of the patent office proceeding is that they construe claims differently than district courts. In district court, it's the, the presumption is plain and ordinary meaning. And it's, you might hear a lawyer refer to the Phillips standard. So Phillips is a federal circuit case that says plain and ordinary meaning applies absent all those different exceptions we talked about. At the patent office, so long as the patent's not expired, the patent's reviewed under what's called the broadest reasonable interpretation standard. And so that means essentially what is the broadest reasonable meaning that t this term could be given by a person of skill in the art at the time. And so that allows for the claims to be construed more broadly at the patent office than they would be in district court. So you can sometimes, and this gets back to what I was saying earlier of the constant battle of do you use your same expert in IPRs as in litigation? Because if you use the same expert, they could, liter could be forced to construe the same words differently because there's two different standards. You might say that the ordinary meaning under the Phillips standards is X, but if I'm asked to do it under the broadest reasonable interpretation, it's X plus, plus a little bit more, X prime or something, um, that gives it a little bit of a difference. And that can make some awkwardness. And so that's one reason why per parties tend to use different experts between the two processes. Uh, because the patent office uses the broadest reasonable interpretation, or BRI, as it's often referred to. Um, the claims are broader, and that is another reason why the patent office is considered to be an, um, an area of challenge for patent owners, because their claims are being more broadly construed, and so there's a bigger risk that prior art gets captured. Yes? So does that mean you, you construing is, is different? So, that's, so the question is whether or not, if you're an expert in district court and IPR, you ha are offering two like, inconsistent reports. So. If I made the decision to use the same expert in both, I'm going to do my, there's no way my report's going to be inconsistent in some way. But you, it will be different. It will likely be different, unless you can come up with a good argument for why the plain meaning is also the broadest reasonable interpretation. But that it's difficult because they're two different standards. And so in both scenarios, you're uh, looking to the intrinsic evidence. and. So, I mean, the short answer is you could be writing reports that are not necessarily inconsistent. They're not inconsistent simply because there's two different constructions, and so that are standards of construction. And so you would, if, if pressed at a deposition or by the judge or in front of the jury, you would say they're not inconsistent. It's that I have two different, I've been asked to give two different opinions. One, I was asked, what's the ordinary meaning? in light of the intrinsic evidence. The other one was, what's the broadest reasonable interpretation in light of the intrinsic evidence? So there's going to be differences in scope there. Um, so that's why there is this very delicate balancing act, and that's why a lot of people will say, let's have one person say what broadest reasonable interpretation is, let's have someone else do the Phillips standard and just keep it separate. And then if there's any inconsistencies between their two descriptions of the prior art or anything, we can just throw it on that, the difference in standards and try to use that as uh, a resolution of that issue.